Good morning, Asia. Welcome to Privateer FX Asia Preview. Week ahead outlook. Won't be around tomorrow. I've got a business, uh, like kind of a 36 hour business trip. So you'll not hear from me. But um, I do want to, you know, take a quick look at the charts. Don't want to overwhelm you. You will. Um, We'll see plenty of, uh, you know, plenty of stuff from our my European counterparts. Anyhow, here's the Euro chart. It's kind of a bearish engulfing, um, big old red bar. Doesn't look good. Dollar strength uh, caught me a little bit off guard. Um, we're just going to go straight down the uh, currency pairs. So that's. Kiwi, we got kind of two doji days in a way, in a row. It looks like it's gapping lower a little bit. Um, you know, I've been long this now since 65.10. Got it a little bit at 65.80. It went up to 66 a figure, but um, the dollar is looking a bit strong. Let's take the Australian dollar. Um, you know, very similar uh, to the euro. We had this big red bar dollar strength bar. This looks like it could retrace. Uh, Canadian dollar, the loonie. What's that doing? This pattern just like right here in this pattern. Let me get rid of these Fibonacci so you can see it more clearly. Um, rid of these two. Hold on. Let's clean this chart up. I got stuff everywhere. Canadian dollar is just a NAFTA trade, right? It's just an absolute nightmare to trade on an intraday basis. So I, uh, but we did have a doji on um, Thursday. We had a big update Friday. This looks kind of powerful. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes up to 131.90. Um, still short that a little bit, but was managed to hedge it up on Thursday with that doji day. Um, Again, just more dollar strength. Another, you know, here's cable. I was really hoping we get up to like this close to 132 at offers between 131.50 and 132 the figure. I'm trying to get short, but then we had this uh, this day here. It's on a six count. I still think there might be some upside left there. Um, take a look at dollar yen. Um, you know, powerful. This is probably the, you know, yield play. U.S. 10-year yields around 3%. Still like selling this one time at this FIBO, uh, 112.38. I think that's good for 100 points. Um, Euro yen. Same deal as the Euro chart. Let's take a look at the S&Ps. ES1 index go on Bloomberg. I hope you guys like the Bloomberg charts. Um, I've, you know, it's taken me about 10 years to kind of get comfortable with them. Um, I'm a huge fan of TradingView. I use TradingView as well. But I think these are a little bit crisper on the uh, video. So I'm using these. And I have the DeMarc studies on here, which we, we talked about at some point. I'll fill you guys in on that. And there are DeMarc studies on, on TradingView, which I like, free studies. And uh, you, you can also pay for it. Um, there's the S&P, kind of a doji-ish type day, a little bit of indecision. Um, I, you know, I think there's been some Trump stuff out past couple hours, you know, completely talking shit. Um, as far as economic data, uh, let's take a look here from our friends at Forex Live. We got RBA minutes. Um, Wednesday, we've got uh, Assistant Governor, RBA Assistant Governor Christopher Kent speaking. I don't know how big a deal that is. So, not much out. It's a you know, slight risk off tone to start your session. Um, dollar EM is kind of doing its thing. Let me see if I can find. Uh, 
You have nothing major. Uh, Japan's Abe did tell Trump that it's dangerous to play with the FX market, which I, I kind of like his style. Um, the Hong Kong lowers the storm warning signal. There's like a typhoon brewing there. Uh, Florence is flood of the Carolinas, but not as dramatic as I think we thought it would be. Other than that, you know, kind of a quiet weekend. So anyhow, uh, I'll be back to you. We got the BOJ this week, um, probably the highlight, and I, you will hear from me um, that night, that day for you. All the best. Cheers.